Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how the Azure Data Factory works in terms of pulling data from an on-premise SQL Server to an Azure Blob Storage. Um, this is the pipeline, how it looks like. It is really similar to a copy-to-copy -copy blob. The only difference is, if you can see it from here, it is pulling data from an on-premise SQL database, and I'm pushing it to an um, Azure Blob Storage. There are several um, things available for you and sources and destinations that are available for you to, to go through. And here's a slide that I have over here. So at this point, um, ADF out of the box supports these combinations. In other words, if you have an Azure Blob Store, you can push the data to an Azure Blob Store, which I've done um, a few days ago for you. If you have an Azure uh, Blob Store, you can push it to an Azure table, and then push it to a SQL database um, on-premise SQL Server, and if you want, on um, IAS, SQL Server on an IAS which means it's VM running on um, Azure. So all these combinations are supported, and vice versa. If you have an Azure table, you can only uh, push it to an Azure blob, to another Azure table, a SQL server, but it doesn't support on-premise SQL server, or it doesn't support the SQL server on IAS. So um, that is a drawback. So that's uh, keep that in mind. If you have uh, Azure SQL database, then pretty much you can do anything you want. Um, since it's table format, it's really easy to move from one place to another one. The same is true for on-premise SQL. You can push it to Azure Blob, or you can push it to Azure SQL database. Now, if you want to push it to an Azure table, for instance, first you push it to Azure Blob Storage, uh, the data, and then you can move it to, with another pipeline to Azure table if you wanted to. So there are many combinations, even though they, um, not all combinations are defined out of the box, using uh, mix and matching technology, mix and matching and creating uh, customized pipelines, you can do it. The same is true for an Azure uh, VM running on Azure, you can push it to a blob or a SQL database. Now, pretty soon, uh, Azure Data Factory is going to support, I don't know when, but they are going to support Cosmos, which is uh, Microsoft's proprietary uh, big data solution, and also NTFS, which means you can actually pull and push data from your Windows NTFS, and plus they are going to support Linux as well, so I'm going to and Linux. I don't know which distributions, but they said they're going to support Linux as well. So you will be able to uh, hit your um, Linux file system and get the data from there, get uh, files from there, and push it to Azure, most probably Azure Blob, and then um, do, the op uh, do, do the opposite. Now, <coughs> let's go to our pipeline. So the first component that we are going to take a look at is this guy over here. Um, let's take a look at uh, its table source. This is the ta this is the name of the data sets or the table source. That's what they're calling right now. And this is the structure. So um, everything is defined as string. If you want, you can make it a different thing. But just for demonstration purposes, I didn't do it. Uh, the next thing. It is really important is the location, the location type. Here you define where the, the data is located at. It is on-premise SQL Server table location. Um, the next thing that's out there is if you want, you can even say, I want this particular table uh, to be pulled as a whole. Um, and then you need to also define the um, the link service that's associated with it. I'll come to the link service pretty soon, but at least I'll, I wanted to give you an idea around how things work. Um, let's skip the availability portion as well, because in and of itself it's a different discussion. Now, my pipeline is uh, has got two components. One of them is the, um, the, the data set consumed and the data set produced. Um, let's take a look at the consumed one. This is the same as the one that you have seen just a few minutes ago. Now let's take a look at to the, to the produced one. 
and let's take a look at the source. Well, the source is the name of the, the data set and the location of it, Azure Blob location, and we are going to use this particular file name. This is the container where it's going to be um, stored at, and this is the link servers to access to that container. And here, what I'm saying is, run this particular pipeline every hour once in, a, in an hour. I'll come to the scheduling portion in another video, so don't worry about it right now, but scheduling is an important factor, for sure. Um, since I went through the pipeline, um, the only thing that I didn't go through is the pipeline source. So yeah, let's go through the pipeline source. Now, the pipeline source is right here. I'll try to make this one, yeah. <coughs> so here's the name of the pipeline. Here's some uh, kind of an ID. I have the description. I have the, the type of the activity, which is a copy activity, which is a must. And then here I define my SQL, um, the source of the, the copy activity. It is going to be a SQL source. And here, instead of defining a particular table, which I could have just skipped this uh, attribute and said nothing, but here I just said, hey, bring me top thousand records from this particular table. So if you wanted to, you could have um, done um, as, as store procedures or uh, a table or a simple select statement. So there are various different options out there. And then the sync operation, this is the source and this is the sync operation, is a blob sync. So if you had um, a SQL uh, server to write, then it would have been a SQL sync. So this table becomes really handy um, so that you can find the combinations that is supported. For instance, right now I am pulling data from my on-premise server, so I can push it to Azure Blob or I can push it to Azure SQL Database. Those are the two, only, two options that I have out of the box. Um, here I define my input and output uh, data set names, HR data table, HR data table output, and then the rest is not really important. You don't need to, to worry about these at this point. So this is how it looks like. Now let's take a look at how the data looks like. Um, here's my database. and. It is, by the way, going to make a SQL connection, and it is going to pull data from this particular table. Select top 1000 star from... It is going to run something like this, and then just bring the data. And where it's going to put the output it is going to be located um, in this particular account, in this particular container, and you are going to see it right at the top because I I sorted this result set based on the last modified date. So now let's run this pipeline. In order to run it, you just click on one of the slicers, recent slicers. It was successful, but here, if you right click on it, you can um, the menu pops up and you can say, "Hey, please run it." This operation takes actually couple seconds. Um, for instance, right now it says pending execution, and pretty soon you are going to see uh, a new line on top of this already existing line saying, oh, it's running. But it takes some time to, to get data from here to here, hence um, that's why it's right now pending execution. Let's see, wait a little bit more. Here we go. It is right now running, and it's in progress. Pretty soon it's going to finish off. By the way, this time is UTC, um, hence my computer's clock, and this time is not in sync. So just keep in mind, but at least the, the minutes are in sync, hence I can figure out how long it takes. And also the duration is over here as well. So. It's not a big deal, but just be aware, especially when you're scheduling, it becomes a little bit confusing. 
So this whole thing is going to run in about a minute, and then we are going to see the file. Oops, yeah, we got the file. So this is my file, and I can show you the, the top ten lines. It is comma separated, and this is the file that I was looking for. So um, this is about the the mechanics. It still it still says it's running. But it's actually succeeded. Uh, right now it's succeeded. We are good to go. Probably when I opened the file, it was not completed. But um, since it's a text file, I can open it and nothing breaks. Uh, how did I do it behind the scenes? Well, this particular UI doesn't have, this is just for monitoring purposes. It doesn't have a development environment. Hence, you need to write a C sharp application or a PowerShell application, and I do have the PowerShell scripts. So I'll go through real quick what is it. I first define a resource group name, a data factory name. Uh, the data factory is this one over here. It is defined. And by the way, I come to the screen from portal.azure.com. It's not Microsoft Azure.microsoft.com. It's portal.azure.com. And then I click on Browse All. Data factories are over here. Why do I do that? It is because um, this particular technology, the Azure Data Factory technology, is pretty new. And it's still in beta phase. Hence, um, it is, it's not available in the actual production environment. Um, so, here I define my data source, um, data factory name, the location where it's going to be located at, which storage account. I'm going to use the file name, uh, the container name. These are just um, the parameters that I define so that I make things a little bit more parameterized. I get my subscription, I set my subscription, and here this line, this particular line, defines my factory. So I say, oh, please create me this particular factory. Uh, and then I get the factory name and the resource group name and uh, put it into a variable so that I can call it when I am creating the all the rest of the, the links uh, the the pipeline. For instance, here I am creating the link service in order to access to the blob storage. And let me go through really quick how it looks like uh, one of them. Like link service for accessing my on-prem uh, SQL server is really easy. You define your link service name, and then you define your type as on-premise SQL server link services. You define your connection string. In this case, I'm using my SQL authentication, but it also supports the integrated um, Windows authentication if you want. And then you, d you need to define your gateway name. I'll come to this gateway concept pretty soon. Just hang on. Um, and then what did I do? I created the gateway. You can do it either through this particular syntax, or you can do it through UI. I will show you through how to do it in UI pretty soon. Um, the next thing is I define my on-premise uh, link service, which I just showed it to you, and I can show you the the one that's the blob storage one. Uh, I think that's this one. So I removed it. Anyway, so this is how it looks like. Um, it defines your your storage account name, and you give it a name, and you define the type. Those are the things that you need to do. And then well, the next thing that I define are my data sets. So this is my data set, the HR da table data set definition, and then HR uh, table output data, uh, data set definition. Once those two data sets are defined, you can define the pipeline in between. And this is um, the pipeline uh, definition. Now the last step that you need to define is the pipeline active period. This is the period that the, the pipeline is going to be active on automated fashion. You can run your pipeline anytime you want um, on on-demand basis, but if you want to run your pipeline automatically in a SQL server in the SQL Server world or SSS world through a SQL agent job, you need to say between these times 
my pipeline is going to be active. I'll talk about later on in a later stage how we are going to set the, the times actually that it gets executed. And this whole rest of the stuff is related to um, how to get rid of the pipeline components individually. So you do essentially the reverse thing. You first delete the pipeline with tables and then link services and then the data factory. So you need to go in that order in order to remove. The last thing that I wanted to show you is this gateway concept. So you define your um, your link service over here, the the blob storage, no big deal, and uh, on prem one, not a big deal. Um, the only thing that's different over here is you need to define your credentials. So you go through, and right now I am on uh, Chrome, so it's not going to work. But if you open up through Internet Explorer, when you click on this, there's a new pop-up shows up, and it asks you for your credentials. And this is my my server name, this is my database name, the server type. Now let's talk about the gateway. Gateway is a little bit wicked, but it works. Uh, so here is my gateway, and in order to install one. You can come and click on this guy over here. I'm sorry, uh, the setup over here, and you can download it. And once you download it, you can install it. And it is called Data Management Gateway. This application over here. It's a service running on your server. Um, you can separate it, but uh, one gateway. It opens up all the the servers behind that gateway, so you just need to install it in, on one server, and then you are good to go to access all the rest of the the servers behind that gateway. So the gateway is the middleman in between your ADF um, on the Azure side and your servers on your uh, on-premise servers. Um, now, once you install it, you, it's going to ask you for a key, and this is how you generate the key. I don't want to do that because um, it is, it's a little bit cumbersome to, uh, to register the key again uh, once you register it. The first registration is pretty easy, but you regenerate the key, it gives you a humongous key, and then you take it, you run the application, and you register your server. Once it's there, you are going to see that these online checkbox mark markers and you are good to go. You can actually access your data on premise. And in order to run, as I told you, you can come over here the uh, the input f the output uh, data sets and click on one of the slicers and just click right click on the run and run it. Yeah, it's now pending execution it's going to execute. So that's about it in terms of moving data from on-prem to a blob storage. You can do the reverse, it doesn't matter, the same concept. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, let me know uh, behind the comment line. Thank you, have a good day, bye-bye.